Thank you, Matthew. Um, we are going to have a lunch break at 12.30. So we are not going to go over time with this Q&A. There are some questions in the Slido that we're going to go through if you, Felix would like to join us uh, on stage. I mean, 12.30 for Finns, it's almost like dinner time. So <laughs> I, I bet people are getting a Should bit hungry. Sit? Yeah, let's sit down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's push some buttons here on, <laughs> that, on that console. But for those, the hungriest ones going already <laughs> to lunch, it's downstairs under this space and somewhere on the right side. Did I give out too much now? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, first of all, thank you. And uh, you got some love. Uh, glad to see Alt being enforced uh, in the image component. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's take the one with a few votes. Um, how many islands per page is too many? When do you go um, with an SBA instead? Oh, that's a good question. Do you want to take it or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't think there's a fixed number. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I think there's probably no upper limit to the number of islands you could add to a page. I mean, yeah, at, at some point, if everything's an island, then it should just be a small. That's definitely true. but. I think a lot of pages might have a lot of very small islands, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Maybe it also depends on whether your islands need to interact. Yeah, If you have yeah. just islands like you have an, a map, an interactive map, or a video component and stuff like that, so things that belong yeah. to your content, I think it's fine to have as many as you need for your, for your content, and you will yeah. hydrate them on demand probably anyway. Um, yeah. But once it starts to feel like an application where you have yeah, lots yeah. of things happening uh, when you press buttons, then yeah, a different approach might be yeah. better suited. Yeah, that's a good point. Like islands are really not meant to interact with each other. Like it is possible to, to make them talk to each other, but the design of the architecture is really with the idea that they are independent. So if you have things that do need to talk to each other a lot, it admits maybe not the best model for that. And then a second most voted question is that um, for both of you, um, what are your opinions on ISR or DSG, so uh, <laughs> incremental studies, uh, static uh, regeneration and deferred static generation? Uh, okay, so my opinion on this is a little complicated. I like the idea of it in general. I don't like that like ISR is a Vercel specific API I think DSG is a Netlify, I'm not sure, but I, I don't like that there isn't like one way to do this for, for every host, that they, you have to kind of do this specially for, for each, each particular host. So like as a framework that makes it not ideal, like because we can't, in, in, we can't easily enable this just for whatever host you might have. Uh, but on the other side, I, I think it is, it is nice in that if you have a site that is mostly static, you want to you don't want to have SSR and bring all the complications that come with that. Um, it is a nice way to go. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, incremental static generation, it's, it's basically like if you had um, server-side rendering with some caching in front of it um, doing stale while re validate. So you get that old previously generated version of your site while some process um, is started in the back end to build the new version. Yeah. And I think you could also do this pattern with classic SSR and some varnish or something yeah. like that in yeah. front. So I like the idea of incremental static generation, but I'm not sure if this needs to be a feature of your framework or whether the, yeah. that should be something which is uh, provided by the surrounding infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, the whole reason to do SSG is it makes things a lot less complicated. And I feel like ISR makes things a little bit more complicated. Maybe not as complicated for you, but it does make it pretty complicated for the framework, so maybe I'm selfish. Uh, that, yeah, I guess that's really how I feel about it. It's also not as performant. I mean, SSR is more performant. You go directly to the server. You have your caching layers. Um, it's just a different way to do that. Ooh, um, you mentioned Capri is a good uh, for small to medium-sized apps. 
sorry. <laughs> can, it, can it also support large-scale applications? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably, <laughs> but uh, I have no personal experience uh, with them, so um, I have used it on websites with up to, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 pages, but the generation happens super, super fast, so um, I don't really see a limit, but in general, I think um, static site generation will probably hit its limits if you have, I don't know, multiple thousands of pages, then you might want to use a different architecture. Um, so I would be interesting to, to learn how it works on, on a larger content site, but I just haven't had a use case for that personally. But yeah, maybe you can, you can yeah. tell something about the experience you had with large astro sites, and it's probably comparable. Yeah, yeah, I would exp it, it, should, it should scale pretty well. I mean, we have people that are building with tens of thousands, 80,000 or more pages as a static site. So that, that can scale. Really, where you run, and, and it, it's going to take five, ten minutes at that point when you get very, very large. So you can still do it. Uh, the limit you really run into, in my opinion, is it's based on, like, what file formats you use. Use something like MDX, which is basically JavaScript. Now you're bundling hundreds of thousands of JavaScript files together, like that's just a slow process. There's nothing you can really do about that. Um, so yeah, for scaling, you want to move to SSR when you get into a very, very large site. So somebody go and test Capri with the large scale. Absent, tell us what happened. <laughs> um, OK, um, how does Astro image component works with remote images? Astro each? Image. Image. How does it work? With remote images. With so remote that's a good images. question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, I believe it works with remote images. I'm not the expert on that, but I believe it does. Like, you can give it a URL to a remote image, it will pull it down and optimize it, I think. And is Astro middleware also available for SSG, or does it require SSR slash hybrid? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, no, it, it works for both. Yeah. And Capri, what about Angular support? Uh, yeah, you're welcome to edit. I, <laughs> I must admit that I have never personally used Angular before, so I was very hesitant in adding it. Um, and I was not really into learning um, <laughs> Angular just for the sake of adding it uh, to, to Capri. Um, but if there's somebody out there with a little bit of knowledge of how uh, Angular works and you would like to see support for it in, in Capri, um, that would be really great. So another thing that I would like to add in future would be a support for web components, um, where I'm also lacking um, personal um, experience with. So um, if you have experience with server-side rendering of um, web components, um, that would also be really great to, to uh, learn about your experiences. Yeah. There, is a, there is a newer meta framework that someone built that's similar to Astro, that, that's specifically for Angular. I don't remember the name of it. I think the developer is Brandon Roberts, I believe is his name. Uh, so there is a, a thing like Capri, like Astro out there, just for Angular. Okay, this is a bit of a longer question. Let's hope I get it right. Uh, if you have a big chunk uh, associated to a component and the directive is client visible, could there be a moment where the element doesn't do what it needs? Uh, well, it won't be interactive. So everything gets server rendered, so the user should be able to see it. Um, but I guess you're asking, like, if he scrolls down real quick and clicks, like, does the click happen? And then I think the answer would be probably no, yeah. So that's something you have to consider. Is like, mm -hmm. you want to use that when it is a lower priority thing, something you don't expect like immediate interaction for. You might also want to indicate that to your users that your island is not interactive yet, yeah? yeah. So you could give some subtle hints yeah. um, to say, hey, you have to wait, and um, once it's hydrated, it could yeah. You it display it differently, or yeah, you get yeah. another cursor, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, your button could be disabled. Yeah. yeah, you could do that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, if only a few more questions. Uh, does dot render in Astro handle suspense by default, or does it have to be added manually? Does it handle suspense by default? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know how that works. I, I think you can use suspense in Astro now. But don't hold me to that. 
Um, Astro doesn't do anything special. We just render the React component. And I think we, there's a certain API you have to use to enable suspense. And I think we enable that because lots of React users have created issues and, and fixed it for us, I believe. Uh, but I, I, I guess I should say I don't know. Uh, and is Astro conceptually for dev teams only? For dev teams only? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, obviously we have built up with developers in mind. Like, it's kind of the, the bottom-up strategy, right? Is you get developers who, who to love your thing, they're going to bring it into your company and get the rest of your company to use it. That's kind of the, the strategy that we, we've been going with. Um, so, I mean, obviously, yes, right now it's mostly developers, but um, we are trying to expand it, make it easier for, like, content editors to write. But for now, yeah, you have to write in the source code, you have to write markdown, that sort of thing. So it depends on, you know, the people on your team, whether they feel comfortable doing that or not. Uh, so I'd say it's, it's mostly devs now, but we're trying to fix that. And the final question, what do you think of markdown alternatives like portable text or Sanity CMS? Hmm. you have an opinion on this? Or? Um, yeah, I think portable, I'm not sure if I see portable text or have seen yet portable text as an alternative to markdown. I think it makes a lot of sense um, to have it, if you, if you have a content management system like Sanity, it makes, have, it makes sense to have some structured form or representation of your content so you, that you just don't get some HTML um, which might contain some formatting, um, but you get something which actually has meaning and you can have custom elements in there. Like you can say, hey, in this content block, I want to have my um, static map or my video player or whatever. And this you also have with, um, with Markdown or with, with um, typed uh, Markdown yeah. alternatives. Um, so in that sense, I think they fulfill a similar use case. Um, but I'm yeah. not sure if it makes sense to, to see a portable text as an authoring format, which you would write by hand like you would do with Markdown. I'm not sure if that's portable a text, case. It's, a, it's an alternative format that's like Markdown, I believe. Like I, I like, there's several of these formats. I, I like them personally, um, but I think people who like them are in the extreme minority, unfortunately, and, and most people just want to use Markdown. Uh, I know in Astro you can use other content types. You can, you can do that. Um, but yeah, it's, they're, they're not as popular. I think what the thing I don't like about Markdown is there's a lot of HTML tags that Markdown don't have an equivalent for, so you just can't do that unless you can write HTML within Markdown, but for the most part, you can't do it like with Markdown syntax, and that's unfortunate because Markdown is kind of like frozen in time, essentially. It's never gonna change. Um, so what a lot of people do is they write Remark plugins, which Remark is a library that allows you to extend Markdown. And so a lot of the things you can't do in Markdown, you actually can do because people just write thousands of plugins to do all these sorts of cool things. So uh, that's interesting, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's give it up for uh, Matthew and Felix one more time. Yeah. Thank you.